Breaking developments in Grand County at this hour. People ordered to evacuate immediately. The entire town of Grand Lake now rushing to get out as the East Troublesome fire explodes. Plus, he spent years helping wildfire victims find a place to live. These are our neighbors. This could be anyone in Colorado. And tonight, he is on a mission to help a man who lost his home in the Cameron Peak fire and is now living in his workshop. I was thankful I got most of my family heirlooms out. A lot of pictures. And, and another coronavirus surge, a third wave. Tonight, one doctor says she, like so many others, hasn't stopped going since this pandemic began. And now she's bracing for what's to come. In healthcare, we knew that this was going to be um, a long haul. And tonight, we have to get right to breaking developments in Grand County. The East Troublesome Fire has exploded. The fire fueled by strong winds. And in the last hour, the entire town of Grand Lake was told to get out, and I mean immediately. The fire has not reached Grand Lake, but it is being threatened. Now, the fire crossed Colorado 125 this afternoon, forcing people east of the highway to evacuate. Also, in the last few hours, new mandatory evacuations ordered for those who live in all areas west of Highway 34 and everybody who lives north of Granby along Highway 34. Hot Sulphur Springs is under a pre-evacuation warning. Granby hasn't been evacuated yet. Of course, that could change. The C Lazy U Ranch is also among the properties evacuated. Now, in the last hour, we also got word that the west side of Rocky Mountain National Park has closed, and people are being urged to drive south to evacuate, but Trail Ridge Road is currently open for evacuation eastbound if needed. Our crews are working to stop the fire from crossing Highway 34. In the meantime, Highway 40 from Hot Sulphur Springs West to Highway 34 is closed. Now, as for size, well, this fire is just moving so quickly that officials don't know how big it's gotten tonight. The priority for them is to get people out safely. At last check, this fire was just 10% contained. The Inn at Silver Creek in Granby is the official location for evacuees. And just a few minutes ago, I spoke with a couple evacuating from Grand Lake, and you may recognize the voice of former Denver 7 anchor Ernie Bjorkman. He and his wife Sue are currently driving south towards Granby, and they call the scene out there tonight apocalyptic. We evacuated about a half hour ago when we got the mandatory evacuation from Grand Lake. We didn't think it was going to come to that, but it did. Uh, the fire is spreading so quickly. Uh, we've had 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts up here of wind, and it just took off this afternoon. Uh, the whole day today, uh, the town of Grand Lake was just covered with heavy smoke. It is just uh, kind of like a Sunday afternoon on I-70. It is just bumper to bumper. Now, this fire is moving quickly, so stay with Denver 7 as updates come into our newsroom. And because the smoke was so bad from the East Troublesome Fire, crews in Larimer County had to stop air operations today at the Cameron Peak Fire. There is some good news, though. Some evacuations were lifted at that fire today, and crews say they really have hit a turning point in the last 48 hours. With that said, this fire is still only 55% contained, and it's grown to more than 206,000 acres. And we want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. And Mike, things really took a turn tonight. We knew the winds would be bad. That's why we've been under a Denver 7 weather action day. So, Mike, when and where are we going to see that moisture? Uh, we're mostly going to see it over the weekend. There might be a little bit tomorrow night, but let me show you the winds currently. We have gusts at Berthoud Pass at 44 miles per hour right now. They've been as high as 60, and this is the view right at the top of the Continental Divide from Leveland Ski Area earlier this afternoon of the smoke pouring off of the East Troublesome Fire. You can see the thick plume of smoke from Grand Lake to Estes Park over toward the Loveland area all the way to Greeley and Platteville, and it extends all the way out toward Fort Morgan. Air quality advisories in effect. Fire weather warnings still in effect across much of the Front Range foothills and all the way down to New Mexico. Now, there is a cold front coming in from the west. That's going to bring us slightly cooler weather for tomorrow and tomorrow night. Just a little bit of precipitation, but this is the one that's going to come in over the weekend. A strong cold front that promises to bring a huge change in the weather pattern for us. This is the good news. Sharply colder by early Sunday. 6 to 12 inches of snow expected for the wildfire areas. A huge help from Mother Nature. I'll have more details on this dramatic change in the weather coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, it can't come soon enough. Yeah. Thank you. Now, even though some people are allowed to return home, others at the Cameron Peak Fire don't have a home to go back to. One man who lost his home in the fire is now living out of his workshop. A local nonprofit's working to donate an RV so he has a place to live. Denver 7's Gary Broad reports. This 
was Seth Knight's home. So yeah, this is the metal shop. And now this is where he lays his head each night. This is my futon <laughs> right here. After his time in the military Pull ended 10 years out. ago, Knight moved to Crystal Mountain and, uh, and with his own hands, built his cabin from the ground up. It wasn't much, but it was paid for and it was my little, little slice of the the woods. As the Cameron Peak fire got closer, Knight packed what he could, some tools, but mostly items money can't buy. That's me and uh, the day I graduated boot camp and my dad and I. When the fire had passed, one of Knight's neighbors took this video of what was a small mountain community of homes. Now, like everything around it, only ash remains. We probably have 10 families so far um, that have contacted us that, that need emergency and transitional housing. You may remember Woody Faircloth. He and his daughter started a nonprofit nearly two years ago, giving RVs to those affected by the California wildfires. Now the fires are hitting a lot closer to home. This one's quite personal. It's right in our backyard. I mean, these are our neighbors. This could be anyone in Colorado. As word spread of Faircloth's nonprofit, he says well, Knight's name my, kept coming up. I talked to a number of, of members of his community and they all tell me, please contact Seth. Please help Seth. He's He's that kind of guy that's always there for everyone in the neighborhood. Knight plans to rebuild as soon as he's allowed back up. He estimates it'll take about two years to get back what he's lost. In the meantime, he plans to build himself a short-term shelter. I'll build a, a masonry block structure, about 10 by 12 with a sleeping loft. And that's why Faircloth is asking for our help in getting Knight and others a place to stay until life gets back to normal. Surely we can find an RV for these folks. They've lost everything they own. They don't have anywhere to stay and you know they want to rebuild up there. Gary Brode, Denver 7. Wow. And if you have an RV you'd like to donate or if you maybe are in need of one, we have a link for all the information you need right now on the DenverChannel.com. Tonight, a promising update from fire crews at the Calwood fire. They say they are making good progress on the ground. They did issue a new mandatory evacuation this afternoon for people in the Lions Park estates. This is not in the town of Lions. The evacuation was in anticipation of winds and the potential for the fire to shift overnight tonight. At last check, this fire was nearly 10,000 acres, 21% contained. No further structures have been damaged or destroyed. That number remains at 26. Go! Tonight we're hearing from those teenagers who drove through the flames and they captured the moments on video here. Luca Churchill, his girlfriend and twin brother were helping friends evacuate when the fire got out of control. It felt like it was going to melt us um, and we opened the window for like a second and it was just like, I mean, I've never felt something so hot. I honestly thought the windows might break um, because it was like, it felt like it was almost melting the truck. I thought my tires melted. The homes were lost here, but Churchill knows he helped get people out of there alive. And an incredible show of support already from so many of you, and thank you. You've donated to our Denver 7 Gives Fund to help these wildfire victims here in Colorado. And we are working hard with United Way of Larimer County and Community Foundation of Boulder County to make sure every dollar goes to those Coloradans who have already lost so much. And you can still donate on the DenverChannel.com. Just click Denver 7 Gives. There will be a drop-down menu and look for Help Colorado Wildfire Victims. Right now, the Adams 12 Five Star School District is discussing whether to send 6th through 12th graders back to remote learning. They're currently under a hybrid learning model. If this passes, the change would take effect immediately. Students in kindergarten through 5th grade will continue with in-person learning. On another day and another 1,200 cases. That's two days in a row with more than 1,200 coronavirus cases added to our state total. And that state total is now 89,000. We also want to update you on the number of people we have lost in Colorado because of this virus. Now, remember, the state records deaths in two different ways. The deaths due to COVID-19, which is just above 2,000, and deaths among cases, and that's about 2,100. And tonight, there are more than 530 hospital beds in use. That's up from 516 just yesterday. And as we move through this dangerous third wave, hospital staff and local doctors and nurses say this is the wrong time to let your guard down. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is at a clinic tonight where a wave of new COVID cases took things from quiet to chaotic in just hours. Yeah, here at Peak Pediatrics in Thornton, doctors say it's like the floodgates have opened the past couple of days. In fact, they've now put up this partition. We're on the wellness side of the clinic, just beyond the partition is the COVID side. You go, oh wait, it's already done. You're done, you're done. 11 year old Liam getting his annual flu shot, his mom Kat thankful for his health at this point. We're trucking through it and it's been yeah. rough with the kids being in 
hybrid learning and yeah. we're just doing what we can and trying to stay positive about it. Liam is certainly glad to be back in school. A lot better than uh, remote learning because I enjoy being actually in school. But kids in class, colder weather on the horizon and an increase in new COVID cases has doctors like Yadira Caraveo, who's also the only MD in the state legislature, anxious about what could be next. I was wondering where the sick kids were um, and they're here now. Yesterday we had five cases um, of coronavirus um, just in this office. Dr. Caraveo tweeting this at the end of an exhausting day this week. You may be tired, healthcare workers are tired too, but keep wearing your masks and get your flu shots. Her clinic now has five machines for COVID and flu testing. It's a molecular test. Comes back in 10 to 15 minutes. She treated one family this week with five kids, two positive for coronavirus, one positive for the flu. It was really devastating. The mom started to cry, and I could see all that stress kind of welling up. Caraveo and her colleagues now pleading with families to take this wave seriously as COVID fatigue is showing up in the positivity rate. I think the people are hitting a wall and that's understandable. I'm tired of wearing a mask all day. In Thornton. Seems like a little thing, but you need to take care of each other through the winter. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. We can't recall a recent story that generated so much response from you. So next, what you had to say about presidential campaign yard signs, including one comment that may shock you. We would like to alert the public. Attempts to intimidate voters. These actions are desperate attempts by desperate adversaries. Tonight, a warning about foreign interference in our 2020 election. What you need to know.